So Bronnie, you mentioned that the thing that you'd most like us to focus on in treatment is finding a way to get on top of the anxiety that you're feeling in social situations. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I wanted to put our heads together today to start to get a bit of a clearer picture of what's happening with your anxiety and what's keeping it going so that we can make a plan of, of how we're going to tackle this. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I'd like to do that. Great. As we talk, I might write things down so I can, can get a picture that we can kind of refer back to. So let's start at the point where you're feeling anxiety. I can appreciate from what you were telling me last week that there was actually lots of things that went into the anxiety first starting, but I wanted to focus today on what's going on in the here and now that's keeping the anxiety going. Bronnie, I'm wondering when you are feeling quite anxious in a social situation, what does your attention tend to be focused on? Uh, I notice that my heart starts pounding. Yeah, so heart's pounding and you're really aware of it and my hands are sweating yeah what else is happening I start to really fumble over my words and yeah I just uh, it's just hard to concentrate on things around me so it's hard to concentrate on things that are going on around you what do you find you're most focused on instead I'm really focusing on like myself and what's happening inside my body and like kind of the mistakes that I'm making um yeah so that attention is really grabbed by those kind of intense uncomfortable sensations in your body you're also focusing on mistakes that you feel like you're making um what are you most aware of when you are interacting with people I guess I'm, when I'm not thinking about my own kind of anxiety, I start notice, I just think that they can notice what I'm experiencing, that, that they can see how anxious I am. Um, so I guess I start to focus on that as well. Right, so really looking at other people for signs that they're noticing your anxiety. Yeah. Um, and, and what do you think would happen if they did notice your anxiety? Well, um, probably that they would think badly of me. Mm -hmm. So really kind of scanning around looking for any signs that people are noticing your anxiety or making judgments about your anxiety, is that right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of scanning for threats. When all of this is happening, Bronnie, when you're getting your heart pounding, your hands are sweating, and your attention is really focused on just how bad you're feeling and how badly you think the situation is going, what do you want to do? I just want to get out of there as fast as I can. Yeah, just want to escape and get out of the situation. If you can do that, is that something you do? You try and get out? Yeah, definitely. I might make an excuse, say that I need yeah, to go somewhere or pretend to go to the toilet and then maybe not come back. Um, yeah. Yeah. When you can find a way of getting out of the situation, how does that feel in the moment? It's like I feel relieved. Does that happen pretty quickly? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of instant relief, right? which must make this a pretty tempting thing to do because you know the anxiety is going to come down really quickly. Yeah. So it kind of feeds back into wanting to escape again in the future because you know it kind of works. I wonder, you know, when you, when you have to go to a social situation and you feel this badly, you'll try and get out of it. Do you ever just avoid going in the first place? Yeah, definitely. Um, if it's like going to be a big crowd of people that I don't know, I won't, I'll just say no to that invitation. And when that happens, when you say no or you cancel going, how does that feel? I mean, I feel glad that I don't have to face that. Yeah, so you get that instant relief as well. Like yeah. you're dreading it and then you don't have to go, so you feel relieved. Yeah. Yeah. So either escaping or avoiding if you can. Um, and, and Bronnie, 
when you're feeling anxious, these are all really normal symptoms of anxiety to get these intense physical sensations in our body, to notice that our attention becomes focused on how badly we're feeling or kind of negative threatening aspects of the situation. And it's really normal to get the urge to escape or avoid when we're feeling that way. And it kind of works in the moment, right? Like we do get that instant relief. Um, but it, it seems like this isn't kind of a long-term solution, right? Because you've been doing this escaping and avoiding, but the anxiety's still going. So it's kind of working in the moment, but it's not working to get rid of the anxiety altogether. Is that right? Yeah, that feels right because it's been there for a long time. Yeah. So maybe we'll put this as kind of short-term impact. Like the short-term impact is, is that you get the relief. But there's something different happening in, in the longer term because the anxiety is keeping on going. So I wondered um, when you have escaped a situation or you've avoided a situation, what's it like the next time a similar situation pops up? Well, it's definitely worse. Um, How so? I guess I feel even more anxious about it because it's something that I might not have done for a while. Um, if I can't get out of doing it, um, my anxiety just goes through the roof. Oh, so the physical stuff gets even more intense the next time? Yeah. Yeah, so those physical sensations kind of increase. You said you also become less certain about your ability to cope with things. Tell me about that. Yeah, if it's, um, if I've been avoiding, say, going out with groups of people that I don't know, the next time I have to do that, um, I just feel really unsure of myself. I don't think people are going to like me and I just feel like I don't have the skills. I don't know how to start the conversation. Right, so feeling kind of a bit rusty in social situations and really losing your confidence that you will be able to socialise in a situation. So that confidence is kind of coming down. Sounds also, Bronnie, like there's a lot of fears that go through your mind before a social situation about whether people are going to like you or not. And then when, when you don't go, you don't get an opportunity to, to test those fears and to find out what would really happen. So the same fears get to keep popping up every time. Is that right? Yeah, that does sound true. Yeah. yeah. So those fears kind of go untested. I wondered also if, if kind of more fears end up getting added into the mix like when you've cancelled on your friends a bunch of time do you start to worry about that yeah I do because if they're not going to like me if I keep cancelling all the time or I kind of feel that they probably just won't want to hang out with me at all gosh so the cancelling adds kind of even more fears to future situations yeah, yeah. so even more worry I wonder, Bronnie, are there things you do that you feel like help manage your anxiety if you have to go into a social situation, ways that you try and make yourself feel a bit less anxious? Um, sometimes I might, like, if it's at, in the evening, I might have, like, a glass of wine or something before I head out um, just to help reduce the anxiety. Yeah, so I want to call those safety behaviours, kinds of things we do to make ourselves feel a bit safer and a bit less anxious in the situation. And it sounds like you feel like you use a bit more of those if you've been avoiding for a while, is that right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What impact does all of this have when the physical sensations come on more intensely in future situations, when you're losing confidence in your ability in social situations, the same fears are going through your mind and they haven't been tested out, you're worrying more and, and relying more on these kind of safety behaviours. What impact does that seem to have on how anxious you're feeling? I mean, it keeps going and it actually gets worse. Tell me about that bit, about it getting worse. Each time I go into the situation, um, yeah, the anxiety is so strong and, yeah, I just really notice all those physical sensations. Um, yeah, it feels like over time my anxiety in social situations has just got worse and worse. 
Right. Do you feel like you need to escape even kind of sooner in the situation? Or Yeah, I do. And I've been just avoiding more and more yeah. of those social situations. Gosh, so if you do go into a situation, the anxiety builds a lot quicker and you need to get out of there. Um, and you're also avoiding more situations. So this is kind of spreading out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that you're feeling anxious in more situations than you used to? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we call the vicious cycle of anxiety, where the kind of symptoms we get when we're feeling anxious, this intense physical sensations that are going through our body, the way that our attention focuses just on how badly we're feeling or how badly we think the situation is going, makes total sense to escape and avoid, and it works kind of briefly. But in the longer term, it kind of robs us of our confidence, robs us of our opportunity to test out our fears and to maybe find out that things won't go as badly as expected or perhaps we're better able to cope than we expected. And so the anxiety kind of continues over time and in fact it can get more intense and even spread out into other areas. Does that fit with how you've been experiencing it? Yeah, that definitely feels true. Yeah. Yeah, what's it like to see it mapped out in that way? I mean, it's, yeah, it's hard to know what to do about it when it's sort of, a vicious cycle like that. Yeah, it can feel a bit disheartening to see how everything's working together to keep the problem going. Well, the good news is that we can find a way where we can harness all these connections um, to our advantage because the fact that everything's connected means that if we can start to make a change in one area, we'll get flow on effects to these other areas as well. So let's find a way that we can start to break into this vicious cycle and, and try and reverse it.